Okay, so hey guys, I'm back and if you're new here, this is Vernon from Same Eco. Uh, you're currently tuned in to our latest segment and it's called Coffee with CM Eco. In this series, we will be inviting one guest for every episode to talk about some of the burning questions when it comes to becoming environmentally aware and responsible. So, without further ado, for today's episode, we have here with us Grace Chow, who is a special needs educator. Um, so a bit of background to uh, who she is. Uh, she's been working with kids ever since 2014, a year stint with an NGO as a caseworker with teenage girls. Uh, she has a major in psychology and is currently taking her BCABA course to become a practitioner uh, and eventually an analyst. So what exactly is BCABA? Uh, it's a natural science whereby she seeks to understand the behavior of people, emphasizing on teaching, um, teaching adaptive behavior, behavior that, uh, that is socially significant, and ensuring that the student or individual benefits from learning it over time. Um, and that indirectly uh, helps them uh, towards society by becoming someone that is independent enough to be recognized as a contributor as well. All right, so I'm going to pass the ball on to you. Grace, can you share a bit more about yourself on a personal side? Um, just a minor correction, actually. Oh, so okay. I study a BCABA course, but it's the, uh, an industry called ABA, which is Applied Behavior Analysis. So it's just that, right? So, um, very minor. So, uh, hi, I'm Grace, and <laughs> I like kids, uh, evidently, <laughs> because awesome. I teach children, and just so happen they have special needs. Yeah. And what else about myself? I like dogs. I have two dogs in my house. They're adorable, and um, I like to eat. Oh, <laughs> I think it comes hand in hand as Malaysians. Ah, yes, I love my food. As Malaysians, <laughs> yes, we love our food. Also, uh, a hobby of mine is that I practice dragon boating. Awesome. So I join, yeah, I joined the team uh, called the KL Barbarians. And we normally practice and train together during the weekends. But unfortunately, with our MCO currently, uh, we have suspended all training. Uh, just to help make things a little bit better for ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Understand. Uh, are you getting some workouts in as well uh, during this time? Uh, I know how it yes, must feel yes. since you can't get out onto <laughs> the lake and uh, do a bit of paddling. Uh, yeah, we we paddle. We air paddle. Of course, we have paddles with us in our rooms and um, we just pretend we're in the water. <laughs> we paddle in the air. <laughs> Uh, on top uh, of that, we yep. just on YouTube videos and we just do some workouts. It's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. So, um, so uh, thank you, thank you uh, for coming on board on this program uh, with us. So let's uh, let's get it rolling. All right. Um, so uh, the the first question I have for you, the first burning question. Okay. So uh, so since you're from the education line, okay, the first question I have for you is. As an educator, what is your perception on going green? And is there uh, enough education uh, and awareness on being environmentally sustainable today? Mm. I guess the first step would be to go back um, a few steps to when I was being educated in school. Um, from there, we learn some stuff about like the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. You yeah, know. The yeah. emphasis is about trees back then, you know, in the 90s and 2000s. You know, trees, you know, we can't cut them down too much. We have to save the paper that we use. Don't use too much toilet paper. <laughs> you know, um, let's recycle the newspapers we have and we make paper machés and yeah. create all this kind of stuff. And sometimes you hear about plastics. To recycle them, what code to look at, uh, to reuse the bottles, you know, to, to store our stationaries. So that was the extent of what I remember to be my education uh, about sustainability and um, helping the environment. And okay. that, that's, that's, that was what I learned. 
So now as an educator, I guess things could be better, to be honest. Um, if you look at how things are in the present time, I don't think there is much advancement in the thought process of going green or being sustainable for the environment. In fact, there hardly is much change in terms of, um, let's say, the government sector. Yep. We promote a lot of recycling, right? Collecting the, the rubbish we have and then sectioning it to different categories like plastic, aluminium, glass. Yep. Even then, it's really enforced. And there's a lot of talk about, okay, let's say I do that. But at the end of the day, it goes in, into one area, like, you know, a dump area, and it's not being recycled. So why should I waste my efforts? You know, so on and so forth. Yep. So yep. that is the extent of what we know of this, this topic, in my opinion, currently. So we need to do more. There definitely isn't enough. Um, so I'm really glad that we're having this conversation where we can be part of a better change or perhaps a quicker change for the younger generation and our own generation so that we can be more environmentally sustainable and take care of our good earth. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Loving everything you're saying so far. Okay. Uh, and I like how uh, you addressed that some of these areas uh, have been lacking and can be a lot more better. Completely agree. Uh, I think there's more to be done. Uh, and I think that's part of the reason why we've uh, you know started this program as well. So woo, yeah, kudos yeah. to us. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> all right. So for the next question, um, so why, uh, from your perspective, are you choosing to be more responsible for the environment? Uh, and do you believe uh, it is very important to be more environmentally aware and conscious in this day and age? Well, first and foremost, um, I'm an idealist. So I all right, all truly right. believe <laughs> <laughs> I truly believe that we are responsible regardless um, of whether or not we want to hold ourselves responsible. So with that thought in mind, um, that is why I'm choosing to take responsibility because it is mine. I've been put here and the earth belongs to us. And in the same way, we belong to the earth. It is a relationship. Yeah. So to, to be in a healthy relationship, um, there cannot be a toxic element. And currently, um, we are the toxic ones in the relationship with Mother Earth. So it's time to rectify that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's why I'm choosing to do it. And even more so now. Okay. Okay. No, thank mm. you. Thank you so much for that. Um, all right. Uh, and, I, and I agree. Uh, I think... A big part of uh, what you're saying as well, which really rings true, is how we, are, as a people on this good earth, are taking responsibilities for ourselves and uh, keeping our homes clean, just the same as uh, keeping our environment clean. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right? All right. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. so moving on. Um, okay, let's, let's take it down on a different tone. Okay, so... Now, what if we, the current generation, fail to go green? What does that mean to all our stakeholders, to everyone, to the animals, to the plants, to, to businesses, to communities, everyone? There will be nothing left. Um, <laughs> because, okay. yep. it, right? Yeah, um, yeah. We are living here. So if there's nothing to take and there's nothing to live off, off um, there will be nothing left. Sure, over the years, let's say, we continue how things are. There will be a lot of fighting, a lot of struggle, um, trying to hold on to the 
resources that are already disappearing. Um, there will be a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of struggle. But end of the day, there will be nothing left. So everything that we've built ourselves for as hum humans, you know, we pride ourselves in being smart, we, in technological, in adv advancement, in going to outer space. All of that will really amount to nothing if there is nothing left here. Because we've been, I mean, since forever or whenever that we can remember, this is our only place of living. It is our only home. If by chance or by some miracle, um, we find somewhere else to inhabit, great. But if we continue the same processes and the same habits that are very bad, even the new place that we call home will eventually disappear. So it really, we really have to reflect on that and our actions. You can't eat money. You know, yeah. there's only yeah. so much you can do with it. You can spend it. You can spend it, <laughs> but you you, but you need air to breathe. You need water to drink. You need food to eat. If there's nothing of that sort left, we die. So if we fail, um, we may not suffer now, but our future generations will suffer, our offspring will suffer, and we are the cause of that. And as an idealist, I will not live with that, and I cannot in good conscience um, go to sleep knowing that if I don't do something now, my future generations will suffer at my hands directly. Yeah. Wow, wow. So deep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I'm very, very inspired by uh, some of the things you're saying. And I love that uh, you are taking charge and you're taking responsibility um, for what may not yes, entirely be... <laughs> strong woman. <laughs> may not entirely be, uh, you know, uh, solely from your own practices, but um, you're, 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 you're taking advantage of the fact that, you know, you're here today and you want to make a difference. Yes. All right. Okay. So um, another question for you is, um, we are uniquely the one generation that is going to both experience the devastation and impacts of our way of life set out by previous generations and the only generation to have inherited uh, at the right age group as well, the duty of ensuring that the following generations get to enjoy what we have been able to enjoy for the last few decades. In this respect, mm -hmm. how do you feel about this responsibility, which should be shared by so many, and how we can make a difference that starts from home? I feel tremendous pressure. <laughs> <laughs> we can't deny that. Um, we are carrying decades of um, abuse to the planet on our shoulders. Um, it will take a lot to reverse uh, the sickness that we have caused upon uh, our mother earth, our good earth. So it is very heavy. It is a heavy burden to carry. So it's great that there are so many shoulders to distribute it upon that um, it feels like the load is a little bit lighter. Um, so there, yeah, so I do feel burdened, but also I feel hopeful because it is carried by so many people. And knowing that there are more and more people that will come on board and um, recognize the need to love um, our home. Um, that really keeps my hope up and that really lightens my heart. Uh, so I really appreciate those people, you people that will come on board and share the same hopes and dreams and share the same cause. Uh, 
that we can work together to do that. So that's great. So that's how I feel. But um, yeah. how do we make a difference at home? That is the harder question to answer. It's easy to feel, but it's very difficult to act differently. Um, as someone that uh, is studying uh, behavior analysis, so what we do is we try to understand people from uh, the most basic fundamentals that we have is that everyone has behaviors. You know, eating is a behavior, sleeping is a behavior. So um, we all do things. Those are our actions. Everyone do them, right? They do them. So uh, changing behavior is very difficult because yeah. habit builds over time. And many things that we have done since we were younger, and especially if we have learned it from our parents throughout our whole entire lives, honestly, to use plastic, you know, then we go and pack food, we go and tapau from the auntie and uncle and the mama or kopitiam, like, hey, can I uh, take this to go? Sure. And then it will come in a plastic bag. Yeah. We will go home. We pour it out into a bowl and we dispose of it. And we don't think twice. And that is what we grew up doing. That's what I grew up doing. And it is a really hard habit to break. Yeah. So it really is very difficult to start from home. Um, so with that in mind and with the, the responsibility that I feel for our earth, um, we can make small differences. For example, when we go and pack food, we go and tapau, we bring our own containers because we all have containers at home. I think that's a guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, mean, without especially a doubt. as <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It is part of the culture to have containers, whether or not they're disposable, whether or not they're the Tupperware brand or they're reusable. We have containers at home. Now, for me, I have made myself a list uh, in my phone. Oh, nice. And in the list, it says, take container, then go home, uh, then go out. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and yep. if, uh, yeah, so I will really look at that memo. So, okay, take container. Make sure I have that container before I leave the house. Then I leave the house. So, and that in itself took a lot of active effort in remembering. I can tell you out of a hundred tries, I have failed at least 50 to 60% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but um, I do think it's really great <laughs> that you are making an effort. And I think that's where it starts. Uh, yeah. until you've built it up to become a habit, a new habit, an adaptive habit right. that is going to make a difference uh, for your generations to come, uh, including oh, definitely, uh, for yeah, others, yeah. right? <laughs> mm. so, so my goal yeah. is to at least make it a, a I don't know, a 95% uh, passing rate for myself in using disposal, <laughs> uh, using reusables, I'm sorry, using reusables uh, in yeah. terms of buying food or buying supplies or my groceries, anything that I need to yeah. buy. Yeah. I, my goal is to make it a 95% passing rate. <laughs> uh, nice. nice. Then very, I can pass that on to people around me and hopefully kids around me uh but that's i guess that's how we start from home yeah yay yay yay, yay. thank you thank you so much that was really really good um great 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 okay uh th there was one thing i remember you mentioned uh that um you had spent some time being exposed uh to the orang asli community um would you, would you like to share a bit about how that's actually helped uh, with your views on um, what's currently happening to the environment? Um, oh, we had that conversation a while back. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's really, really good. Uh, a really, really good point from your <laughs> from your end, and I think it's something that um, would be really, really helpful to share uh, on this session. It does help uh, with my bias, obviously. So, 
when I was younger, from the ages between eight to I was about fourteen or fifteen, I I had an uncle who who is a pastor, and back then when he was um still young and strong, right now he's a little bit on the older side. Um, he <laughs> served in the or- <laughs> yeah he served yep. in the Orangasi community, um, in Cameron Highlands. So I grew up following him into their villages and just staying with them for a short a short time um, living with them in their way of life you know they live in these huts that are low to the ground there are cute doggies everywhere and they plant their own vegetables you know they have their uh, they're not very big plots you know they're kind of small plots but enough that they can feed their own family and a little wow. bit to trade trade with their neighbors nice and maybe a little bit more to sell to earn a little bit of money so uh, yeah so i did spend some time with them and that really made a big impression um especially um it helped me gain a curiosity for the jungle in malaysia that we have the the green and the trees around me you know and the little critters that we, we normally ignore. Yeah, there are bugs, there are some really small reptiles, and sometimes we see some some small mammals around, and um, there are times where they choose to, to catch those animals to eat because you do need a source of protein that is more um, efficient, and yeah. sometimes vegetables are not that efficient. So it's very practical. It's like okay, I will take what I need. Yeah. Whatever I don't, I will leave it there, and they flourish. So it really made a big impression. I was very curious, like, oh, what's this? What's that? And because I'm from the city, I know nothing. Right? <laughs> we grew up in, uh, like, like you know, our homes. They're very clean and very sterile, and yeah. very away from nature. Whatever bugs we have, we terminate them. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yes yes very true very true it is true yeah um so our houses are very clean and when i was you know just a short time with them sometimes two days sometimes a week um it really changed how i look at things because okay after the short stint i come back home and i go to school and i go about my day and you know my life it's so different and we are really missing out it, I really feel that there is some sort of feeling in touching the earth, you know, being barefooted, stepping on dirt. You, you feel one with nature. You really feel right at home. And you don't get that in your house. So yeah. despite the difficulties, it's uncomfortable. There are mosquitoes around it. You're sweaty. It's hot. It's humid. You know, you're scratching. You're sweating. But it still felt just really good that oh okay i'm home it's where i belong and it's okay you know the things around me are there because they're meant to be there so i really developed a love for nature and the environment and it is very saddening to to really see um things changing so Yes, I currently live in a very sterile environment. I still live in a comfortable home. I don't live, you know, on the dirt. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I, okay, nothing wrong with that. But nothing it is wrong. something... Yeah. yeah, nothing wrong. But I do want to make a change in terms of how I live. You know, uh, I go hiking, I go swimming. So I do touch the dirt once in a while. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think there's nothing nothing but, better than getting in mm, touch with, with with nature, right? Mother nature, correct. spending some time in it, and having yeah. that wonderment and curiosity, right? Correct. But the thing is, right? Even when we're so far away, we still hear news about the devastation, uh, especially in our Malaysian forests. Our rainforest is is a wonder, you know. Yeah. Um, there are many things that we have in our rainforest that are not existing in other parts of the world. And they are dying out, they're going extinct, and it's shame. And it's really so sad when you hear about this. And we are so far away, 
and yet we can feel the devastation of it. You know, the climate is changing. There's global warming. Every day we're complaining. It's so hot outside. Um, yes. We yes, don't reflect, so like, and we'll say things like, "We I don't remember it being so hot when I was younger," because it yeah. was not. Yeah. It's just really hot now. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, um, yeah. like if you talk about Cameron Highlands, um, you know. If you're up to date, you will hear about the development, the housing developments that have been going on there. It's all of a sudden, they have terrace houses in Cameron Highland. Oh, and it's not this. inhabited by anyone. Oh, okay. okay, so there are terrace houses there. They have <laughs> built big malls in Cameron Highlands. Malls. Malls. Okay. Oh. Where the tourists go, but... It's big enough that you'd be wondering, why is it so big when it's so empty? And those terrace houses, no one really lives in them. They're bought by people from China. So, and because of that, when you go to the lower areas in Cameron's, it's warm. It is as if you're here in KL or, or Sibang or, or wherever down here. It is no longer cooling. You have to go to the higher parts of Cameron Highlands to feel the same effect coolness yeah. of that cold yeah. that you're looking for so um so i've kept track of that here uh can you imagine if i lived there so and and i'm thinking about the orangasi community there as well things are yeah. so much more difficult for them they no longer have the land to plant their own vegetables the animals have disappeared they find it really difficult to scavenge for things to sell their livelihood is dying and they are forced to live to leave their community and integrate into society and leave their culture behind so that is very devastating yeah. um so with that in mind we have to know that the environment plays part in a culture just because our culture decided to leave it behind doesn't mean every other culture has. Yeah. So we have that in mind. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, truer words could not be spoken today. <laughs> I really, really appreciate your views on this. Uh, very, very enlightening. Um, okay. So to tie this up today, um, yeah. what is one positive change that you want to see from being more environmentally conscious? in the nearest future what is the one thing that you really want to see change hmm. cleaner waters all right i think that's a very good start <laughs> yeah 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 um there have been initiatives to clean the waters in our rivers and over the last few years very recently like the past three or four years there have been initiatives to clean our beaches just okay. go there and pick up rubbish yep as yep. simple as that and yeah, because yeah. of that um you can see the waters are a little bit cleaner um especially the one i um followed was in port Dixon. okay they cleaned up yep and then yeah the beach looks clean <laughs> after that <laughs> but uh people still litter so the rubbish came back unfortunately okay, okay. so it's a it's a cycle so, so, so clean, one thing yep. is cleaner water. Another thing would be civic mindedness. I mean, in educating ourselves to be civic minded and to stop littering. There's a rubbish bin, like, you know, five steps away from you. Please throw it inside. Yeah. It is as simple as that, really. Yeah. 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 Great. Great, great, great. All right, love it. Thank you so much for your insights this today, this session, throughout this session. Uh, really, really enjoy okay, my help. time. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> any any help uh, towards uh, creating more awareness and educating others on how we can lead better lives, some more sustainable lives. Uh, I think are the way to go uh, today. Um, so, once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, would like to uh, thank our audience uh, as well uh, for taking time to tune in. Um, 
Uh, and, and, and to our audience, uh, we will be working on some uh, collaborative projects uh, with Grace. Uh, we're still in discussion on that uh, in the weeks yeah. to come. And we will be sharing about them uh, soon as they come. So do, do stay tuned. Uh, if you haven't yet, do click on the subscribe button below, share this video with your friends uh, yes. and um, do give us a <laughs> thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode with us on Coffee with CME Code. So till then, thank you so much and take care. Bye. Bye.